This is Craig DeMoe, and we're going to begin to get today with a little video, and I think the context will be self-explanatory, and I'll just go ahead and begin that right now. Hold the line. Lawyers are still going to fight the government and the high court over the mandates that kids are being subjected to right now, and they will support any workers who are having these mandates forced on them. You don't need to get the vaccine. Hold the line. Be in contact with the lawyers who are going to fight these. Okay, so hold the line, guys. They keep saying, hold the line, stand your ground, do nothing. It's falling apart, and we've got truckies who are coming out and going, we will cripple the industry. We will shut down. We will mass strike. We will boycott cities. We will not drive because this is where we realize that we actually have the power. They need us more than we need them. They can send the army. They can send cops in. They can do whatever they want. But if we refuse to work, mass strikes, cross sectors that the government depends on, they work for us, not the other way around. And if we just shut down and say, we're not going to do it, they're going to have to back down. They're going to have to back down. So guys, I'm telling you right now, there is exciting stuff happening. And I'm like, I don't care about curfews. I don't care about how many army you send in because it's all falling apart and it's all coming to an end real soon. Yes, just hold the line. Email your MPs, tell them you vote no confidence in this, this government. The entire national cabinet needs to go. Do it, guys. Seriously. It's all good news today. You know, there's a couple of phrases, a couple of things I that are takeaways to me. Uh, what we heard was this. Hold the line, stand your ground. This is where we realize that we have the power. Our guest today can explain exactly what she meant by these statements. Praise God. And this is another one of those videos in that series, the title of which asks a very important question. That question being, what have we learned? And I'm talking about the last year and a half or so. This is Brother Craig. And to help us with that, we have a great guest. Uh, one, I think we need to hear from at this juncture. We've had her with us before. I'll introduce her properly in a moment. But first, I want to say these things by introduction. When we talk about what have we learned, I am speaking primarily to believers. Asking that question is an imperative. We must emerge from this period of time equipped to train our children and grandchildren in such a way that they don't have to go through the same things that we did. So what have we learned from suffering through a time of onerous, unconstitutional, illegal restrictions on our worship services, being told that our gatherings are non-essential? In other words, they're dispensable. They're not that important. What have we learned from watching our liberties erode while public safety evaporates from our cities through rioting, looting, burning, destruction? Pray. What have we learned from ideas and ideologies that are anti-Christ being shoved down our throats? It doesn't matter whether we're talking about critical race theory, Marxism, uh, that separation from one another is a good thing while ignoring basic common sense, all at the expense of freedom of thought and freedom of expression, which are supposed to be hallmarks of our traditions. What have we learned from seeing not only our individual votes, but our collective elections stolen right from under us? Well, nefarious people that already have too much power being installed as leaders. I'm talking about people that we didn't even elect. They were not elected. They were selected. 
and we didn't do the selection. And by the way, the full result, results of the Maricopa County, Arizona audit will be released this Friday afternoon at 1 p.m. Pacific time, and it's explosive. So we talk about what have we learned and what is your response? What about your response? Are we just supposed to take it? Is oppression or taking it on the chin a way to walk in love as Christians? I propose there's got to be more to this for believers than simply, well, you know, this is the end times and things are supposed to be bad. Really? Or, well, this just means that we have to love everybody, always be kind, always bear up under any pressure, no matter what, which actually is an evasion of responsibility, in my view, or, well, none of this even matters. After all, we're just supposed to win souls, not be concerned about society. And if we just show our love and compassion to people, everybody's going to be saved. I want to say to you, that is not true. Everybody is not going to get saved that way. God gave us our lives and our liberty and we're, we should not squander those things in the name of love and submission. And I'm not going to do it. If we throw away our lives and liberties, we're giving away a tool that God uses to win the lost, disciple believers, and even disciple whole nations. And by the way, you can't disciple the nations if you can't travel because of a fake pandemic or you're censored, or you're sick, or you're being muzzled by the state. So my question, what have we learned is a call to wake up and really seek the Lord, search the scriptures. Maybe things are not always as they seem. Maybe the theological framework that we've been trained under needs to be challenged. Maybe there's something bigger going on. And God has something else to say, and he might even want to use you and me to do it. If you've listened to me at all, you know a little bit about my perspective. I don't believe that if your life is in danger, or your children are in danger, or if your neighbor is in danger, remember we're supposed to love our neighbors as we love ourselves, that you're just supposed to take it. I would suggest that you have a responsibility to protect your God-given life and liberty because what good are you to other people? What good are you to winning souls or serving other believers if your life is taken away or se severely restricted? That's why we're talking about this subject. Now, I've, I have several videos on this subject. Check it out on YouTube, on BitChute, and I believe there's some really important material there. That's in addition to all my Bible teaching videos. But, you know, one of the videos that we've done on the subject, What Have We Learned, uh, was, uh, with, with, was our earlier interview with Maya Regler. You say, well, who is Maya Regler? Regler? Well, she's a mom in Australia. And uh, I'm going to bring her on the screen right now. She's not only uh, a, a mom, but she's also a worship leader. And she's a lover of Jesus, somebody that I've, I've grown to respect a whole, whole lot. And uh, she's, she's also a researcher. And she's a loud mouth. <laughs> but that's a good thing. See, don't tell me that one person can't make a difference. Maya Regler is one of those kind of people that proves otherwise. She is making a difference. And uh, what she's doing is she's disseminating information that people are getting a hold of, and they're able to run with, and people are being emboldened by what she says, because she speaks with authority, she has done her research, and she's certainly somebody that I will defer to on many subjects, and particularly when we're talking about government restriction, when we're talking about the coronavirus, uh, you know, when we're talking about uh, the vaccines, all of those kinds of things, you see, and she it lives in Australia. Uh, Australia is highly significant 
for the world's freedom, not just for the land down under. They're very significant for the world's uh, freedom. And the, I'll just tell you why I believe that, because it's undergone what I consider to be some of the most onerous, probably the most onerous restrictions in the world. And if the Australian government is for, forced to roll back its restriction, no country can, can keep those restrictions, in my opinion. So uh, now, Maya, you said that those things are falling apart. It's coming to an end. And you say that this is the time that we figure out that we are the ones who have the power. And so hold the line. And I want you to talk about that a little bit. Uh, I, I'm a, I, I appreciate your enthusiasm. So I've been saying too much already. I want to hear from you. Yes, well, um, I'm in Sydney, Australia, so we're probably, uh, we're heading into nearly our third month of pretty strict lockdowns. I'm also in one of the LGAs of concern, so that's like local government area, and there's further restrictions on people that live in these specific areas. So We've been on curfew. We were not allowed out of the house for to exercise for uh, longer than an hour. So mm. um, had a lot of um, it, children. Our children are not at school. Well, um, and so we're um, yeah. We've been on that for about two heading into our third month now but the curfew was just lifted i believe what's happening is there have been a number of lawsuits filed against our government so against the new south wales government in particular which is where sydney is based and there's also been lawsuits filed in victoria where probably the most the only way i can describe him would be communistic um, premier or state leader that uh, in operation in Australia at the moment, which is Daniel Andrews. Our premier, Gladys Berejiklian, I'm not quite 100% sure how to pronounce her last name, is on a par with him now. So mm. she, we've, we've come under quite heavy restrictions, but uh, and they introduced a vaccine mandate for workers who live in the LGAs of concern where you had to be uh, vaccinated by a certain date or you would not no longer have your employment. Um, mm. So that was brought in by our health, the New South Wales Health Minister, and he is the specific target of those lawsuits. So um, there are people and industries that are pushing back against the vaccine mandates and they are taking him to court specifically to challenge the authority by which he has um, made these mandates which are completely illegal according to our constitution so they um, he has given himself a power that he actually does not have any authority to give himself and I would say that if we if we win even one of those cases, which it's looking likely that we will have a very good chance of winning at least one, the rest are a shoe in So only one needs to be successful and then the rest of them, all of it starts to fall apart from that point mm -hmm. because... He superseded, uh, it sounds as though they're arguing, the court case has been argued from the perspective of our Biosecurity Act. And when public health orders are brought into play under a state of emergency, they still must be able to run concurrently with other laws, federal laws that are in place. And if they do not, if they are against laws, federal laws that supersede those, then the, the state laws must cede. 
they mm -hmm. must see and bow, they must bow down to the higher law. And so that's where the lawyers that um, are fighting these cases are absolutely brilliant. So um, I have every confidence that they are going to win those cases. That's um, wonderful. Every confidence. And where Australia has stood up to protest, what we're seeing around the world is... Um, like France, Greece, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, have come out en masse to march against vaccine mandates. But all the while, those leaders are still pushing forward with very, um, well, with an agenda that is completely not conducive to freedom or liberty right. for, for people. So... Um, the French uh, president Macron has, you know, he he brought in mandates where people couldn't go shopping unless they'd been jabbed. Uh, they couldn't um, go to the hospital if they were sick unless they'd been jabbed. So uh, th th that's like a completely different level to even what we are seeing at the moment, although they are trying to bring it in. So he brought in a vaccine passport esque type uh, policy in France and people cannot could not shop unless they had a vaccine yeah. however they challenged that in court and that has been disbanded because that's actually a uh, violation of human rights right. being able to purchase food <laughs> to be able to live is actually a basic human right. Mm. Who knew, right? So a judge actually put a pause on that um, that rule that yeah. Macron had brought in. Now here we don't seem to have people who are willing to stand up as much. So we have a very much a she'll be right mate attitude and just got to do what you've got to do so that you know things can go back to normal and and you know the amount of uh people that are semi stuck in that sort of uh i, I call it a deceptive way of thinking like mm -hmm. we know that once you cede liberties and freedoms the government doesn't willingly give them back to you you know so absolutely uh, once they're gone <laughs> Yep, they're not coming back. So right. uh, people don't seem to understand or or get that uh, uh, mentality. But we will fight in the courts. Mm -hmm. That's where the fight is taking place. So uh, with these uh, class action lawsuits and. Um, and then we've actually had construction workers that are now um, holding their own protests. And already we see, though, in New South Wales in particular, that the health minister is trying to backtrack from mm. some of his decisions that he's made. So restrictions are being lifted. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, we're going to lift the vaccine mandate for that area. We're going to, you know, so he's backtracking away because the first, the court case is being heard on the 30th of September. Mm. And so he's been sort of adapting the public health orders in accordance with the hearings of those, uh, of the court hearings. And then he's like, oh, I better just, you know, pull back a little bit from that one and I, I better, you know, ease off on that restriction. And uh, the, the fact that they have specifically targeted him, mm -hmm. I believe is a crucial and critical um, that, that needed to happen. They're not targeting the Premier. They're targeting the health minister himself mm. because mm -hmm. he is the one giving the directives that are putting people into lockdowns and so on and so forth. Now, we've been in lockdown for nearly three months and funnily enough, our case numbers are higher than they've ever been. 
So <laughs> in the time that we've been locked down, they have massively driven the campaign to get everybody jabbed. So yeah, eighty yeah. percent was the number. And let me, and let me guess. Uh, even though there's a lockdown, the COVID numbers continue to spike, and what they blame that on is the people that are have not re, have not gotten the the vaccine, right? <laughs> so uh, <Wow>. anyway, <laughs> you know, you know, this, some of this. I mean, at some point, it just it just gets really silly, you know, and and people start to think a little bit. So I, I want to get a little better handle on what exactly is the mood of the people in general? You're saying there's sort of a, an attitude of, let's just you know cooperate, let's get along and so forth. And so maybe people didn't push back for quite some time. Are people beginning to, to push back? And is that having an effect on those that are advocating legally for the people um, you know, what is the mood shifting? Yes, uh, very much so. So what happened yesterday, I don't know if you're aware of what has occurred in Victoria, but the construction industry was um, given a vaccine mandate. Yes. They approached their union, so the people who represent our, the construction workers down there in Victoria, um, to say, what are you doing? You're meant to be sticking up for us. You know, we're, we're your people and you are meant to advocate on our behalf. And they sided with the government. Mm -hmm. So the union actually sided with the government and a massive protest bro broke out. Yeah. A massive protest broke out where um, construction workers actually just pretty much went on a rampage and and it was it, and too right. They should, you know, too right because their livelihoods are being threatened if they do not submit to getting um, a vaccine. And so they 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 protested, and then the premier of that state decided to shut down the entire industry for two weeks as a punishment, pretty much for what they. <laughs> had done, all right? And unfortunately and sadly, a construction worker on being told that they had to put tools down um, committed suicide. Oh, my. And my, my, my. Line. So that occurred yesterday morning and then the construction workers just, it's been a mass protest since mm -hmm. that. So, um, and I can completely understand their uh, frustration and their devastation um, of what occurred yesterday and what is occurring in their industry. And um, unfortunately, in Australia, our, our suicide rate is the highest it's ever been. My, mm-hmm. So um, I read uh, a post yesterday by somebody that I follow and he's very, very good with his data and his information as well. Australia's suicide rate prior to the pandemic was between eight and nine a day nationwide. Mm -hmm. It's higher than that just in the LGAs of concern in Sydney. My. How many LGAs would you say that there is nationwide? And, well, Sydney is broken down into LGAs and okay. uh, the ones that are on, on restrictions, higher restrictions, are um, there's 12 of us, but okay. that's not including Greater Sydney. So it's just one, it's pretty much Western Sydney, Southwest Sydney. Um, that region is 12 LGAs that are in that pool. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, in those LGAs of concern, the suicide rate is 10, 11, 
12, 13 a day. Mm. Yeah, tell us, tell for the viewers, tell us again what LG what LGAs are. So LGAs are local government areas. And okay. so um, suburbs will be broken down into uh one pool and that will come under a, a one banner like Canterbury Bankstown LGA. Mm-hmm. We've got Liverpool LGA. We've got, you know, so Blacktown LGA. We've got, and so there, there's there's 12 and it's not actually a surprise, but it is where the majority of the alpha males live. In I Sydney. see. Okay. So, they're the LGAs that have been locked down tight is the ones that have the known very much yeah. alpha male um, migrants, uh, Lebanese, Polynesian, the, the, the men, the men, the real men, you know, so they've specifically targeted and almost discriminated against yeah. these particular LGAs. Now, we do have MPs that are fighting on our behalf um, because they're calling out the discrimination. Mm -hmm. It's very blatant that there's discrimination against people who live in these particular LGAs by the restrictions that um, have been put on us to to break us down, if that, to mentally break us down. But, uh, yeah, they, they... they haven't um, taken into account um, just how strong these um, these men are. They they will not break. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not yeah. Well, break. that sounds a little sexist to me. Sounds racist to me. But uh, anyway, um, you you probably won't hear that much in your mainstream media. But at any rate, <laughs> praise God. Hey, uh, um. I want to ask you to talk about something else as well, and you could tie this in however you uh, see fit. Uh, you were saying before we started the recording today that uh, since we did the interview earlier about the origins of the coronavirus, there's been a lot more information that has come out about that. And of course, uh, there's been a lot of revelation uh, that has come to come to the surface relative to uh, our CDC, you know, and uh, which by, by I have a new I have a new way to to uh, change that acronym. CDC to me is a three letter agency which almost automatically uh, is has a negative connotation because they were all created to do negative things. But to me, the CDC is the Communist Doctors Coalition. And uh, it's not the Centers for Disease Control because they don't control disease uh, except in the sense of uh, using disease as a way of controlling the population. Now, uh, maybe I shouldn't be saying that on, uh, you know, live like this, but I just did. So anyway, praise God. Um, We are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. And just like God uses people, he fills them with the Holy Spirit and he uses them as his mouthpiece and as his uh, hands and his feet on the earth. Devil does the same thing. You know, he didn't create anything. He uh, just perverts God's model. But, uh, you know, this this whole uh, pandemic, scandemic, plandemic, whatever you want to call it, uh, didn't just happen. Uh, It came from somewhere, and I believe it's the enemy's devices. So at any rate, I was wondering what else you can tell us about the origins and where this takes us and uh, tie that into where we're going, because I think where we're going is is all good. For sure. For sure. Um, So uh, last time when we spoke, we spoke about the Wuhan lab and we were talking about um, the gain of function research that was funded by the NIH through Fauci. Like with this was known information when we had that discussion last time. Mm-hmm. I, I'm 
quite shocked by how much he has attempted to lie about that to Congress. It's, yeah. it's like we already yeah. know We've got the research papers from that lab that have your funded your gov your agency is named as the um, funders of that yes. research. Mm -hmm. right? So um, now here was an interesting bit of information that I didn't know at the time. I hadn't been aware that China had released the genomic sequencing of the virus to the world in January. So I wasn't aware of that when we spoke last time. And um, I was having a conversation with someone and we were having a discussion about it. And I was like, oh, I've seen the genomic sequencing for the, the variants and yada, yada, yada. And they said, um, oh, you mean like the original one from when China put it out? And I said, hang on, hold up. What did you just say? And, and they said, <laughs> yeah, China released the genomic sequence of the virus last year. And I was like, when? When did they release the genomic sequence? And they said, in January. I said, in January. And, and they were like, yes, um, they must have felt bad. You know, they felt bad because it was known now that the virus, and I knew, instantly knew that something was not right with that story straight away. As soon as they said China released the genomic sequence, I was like, that's not right. Something is wrong with that. N that doesn't make sense to me because I already knew they had tried to cover it up for so long that they even had an outbreak in their own country. Mm -hmm. Going to the such lengths to silence their own doctors yeah. through trying to get that information she out. Did. And then all of a sudden they just, what, released, decided to release that information to the world. They provided the genomic sequence. So I started digging into that story. And it, that genomic sequence supposedly came from the Wuhan lab of virology in January. So the Wuhan lab released the genomic sequence in January and at that stage no one was even looking at that lab as the source of the outbreak well wow. they so we were still on the bat, bats in the wet market that was what the world was being told right was that yes. these bats in a wet market is where the virus came from and so no one better than I lid when it came to this genomic sequencing being put up. Here's the problem. Because we've been told throughout this situation, like throughout this pandemic, that no one has been able to um, isolate the virus. No one has been able to isolate and purify the virus to, to coax postulates and and no one has. No lab has actually done it yet, which seems funny when you've got the genomic sequence of the virus that supposedly came from Wuhan. So I'm like, hey, so what's not right with the story? And as I started to dig into that story, I found out the reasons why there was probably never going to be a genomic sequence for the virus that was legitimate because it was computer generated. My. So <laughs> break, that, break down for us the significance of that. Okay. So it means the whole genomic sequence that was released to the globe for their labs to work from for this is the seek this is the blueprint that every country used to work as the model to work from that the Wuhan lab put out the genomic sequence of the virus. And that blueprint is fraudulent. So we're talking about Love. kind of like a politician given his talking points. This is what you're supposed to say. Is, is that, am I, get, am I getting that right? 
In other words, uh, this is this is the way we're going to sell this pandemic. Well, I believe that they, um, and I'm just going to hypothesize for a little bit. So I, I tend to just like dealing in the data and the yeah. facts. They only yeah. actually yeah. had 37 to 37 base pairs of a fragmented base pairs of this virus structure to work from. So they used a computer program to menu to create a virus, a genomic sequence for a virus. Okay. And that was the blueprint that was put out to the world. Now a normal virus has 30,000 to 40,000 base pairs, and they only had 37 fragmented pieces. So they didn't even fit together, if that makes sense. They had 37 base pairs of some fragments of something that they took from lung fluid, and they cre they basically created a virus in a computer program and put that out to the world as the genomic sequence for the virus. So that is the genomic sequence that went out, and it is wrong. It's a fraud. And so in June of this year... China actually had it removed from the U.S. database. Okay, so now I'm aware, I'm not even thinking of the man's name, I'm aware of a multi-billionaire in the U.S. that has offered several million dollars, I think it's seven million dollars for anyone to produce the virus. Yes. And no, and no it, it's, it's like... It's like, let me use an example. It's like Mike Lindell saying, anybody who comes to my cyber symposium and proves that everything that we're saying is false, I will give you $5 million. Nobody even attempted to, to take him up on his offer because nobody could, right? Nobody has attempted to uh, claim the $7 million to produce the virus. Now, if... The virus, if there is, and I'm not, I'm not saying there is or there isn't, but if there is a virus that is spreading, and that's why we're supposed to wear these face diapers, and that's why we're supposed to stand apart from one another, which already uh, there are health leaders that have admitted that that isn't really based on anything scientific whatsoever. It's just arbitrary. And that's why we're supposed to get this, not just a, a shot, but we're supposed to get a whole series of shots. And there's all these variants to the virus. Uh, but if, if none of this, you know, if nobody can even produce, can isolate it so they can bring it somewhere for it to be analyzed and say, there it is. The, here's what's creating problems all over the world. And nobody can, nobody can do it. Now, uh, uh, just, I want you to, Maya, if you would, please, because <laughs> I'm hearing some new things myself. Okay. So I want you to just kind of camp out there a little bit and even approach this from a different angle. And, uh, just break it down even further, because I think there's probably somebody's somebody who's listening and your head is exploding and you're wondering what is what is she talking about? So yes. so so keep talking to us about this. Well, yeah. So the 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 general consensus of people who um know about that they put out this genomic sequence is that China felt bad. That's why they put it out. And it's like China never feels bad for anything that they do. So that that is that is a that Sorry. straight away was a red flag to me. So yes, they only had fragments that they had taken from some lung fluid and they created it. It's called in silico. So it's created using a specific um, computer 
program. So the whole genomic sequence is actually a computer generated viral sequence. Mm. So all of the, all of the um, variants, all of the have come from the blueprint model that was given to us by that Wuhan lab. So everything stems from that one blueprint. Okay. And the blueprint is fraudulent, like completely fraudulent. Okay. Completely fraudulent. And so um, that's, and so when I went to go look, I, I went looking for it and then I saw the article saying that China had asked for it back. So they actually <laughs> took back that genomic sequence this year after, after the massive jab rollout. Now, here's, here's, the, the, here's the big problem with all of this. China provided the coding for the mRNA vaccines. Okay. So the Pfizer, the Moderna, coding for those vaccines came from China and they already committed fraud. Mm. If that makes sense. So what <laughs> is the vaccine for? in the first place when the whole viral structure is fraudulent? Well, I've, okay, I've heard you say that you suspect, and this is, a, I'm referring to an earlier video, you suspect that uh, the whole pandemic scenario, the way it's been given to us, is all a ruse to get us to the vaccines. And the vaccines are, are basically to dumb us down, to make us compliant, to, uh, to cause us to be willing subjects to whatever the, uh, the CCP or the New World Order or whoever's involved wants to happen. So... Um, you know, Absolutely. that that makes that makes sense to me. It makes sense to me that this was about the virus all along. Now, isn't it isn't it interesting if if what you're saying is true, that basically what we're looking at is a pro a program in a computer, and that's that's <laughs> what that's what has been sold to us. That's not unlike the way our election was stolen. Okay. I mean, it's the same basic thing. I heard Charlie Ward. I'm just going to drop some names here. Which, I heard, which is also China, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Behind yeah. This stealing of your election. So. Well, they, 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 you know, they've stolen our, you know, when I say they, listen, I, I have been to China many times. I love China. I love the Chinese people. I'm not talking about the general population. Yeah. China has the strongest christian church in the world these people pray like nobody's business all right and so i'm not i'm not i'm not knocking everything chinese but i'm talking about the ccp i'm talking about the ruling elites who think they're in charge now um those folks uh have been stealing our intellectual property in the USA for decades. And uh, they do it with the intent, I'm talking about the CCP again, they do it with the intent uh, for world domination. And uh, there's several ideologies that that's their, their end game, world domination, see? But they, that's all silly, you know, Psalm 2, why do the nations, why do the heathen rage, the, uh, the heathen imagine a vain, vain thing? And, and God sits in the heavens and laughs because he's already in charge of the planet. And, uh, you know, at the, at the set time, he'll, he'll yank the chain and everything will get in line. See, because he, he had it all under control all the time. But we, you know, it, this is amazing to me what you're saying. My, my, my mind is going several directions. It says in the it says in the book of Revelation 
that by the use of pharmakia, okay, it's it's sorcery, but it's pharmakia, uh, you know, the nations were were weakened. And, uh, you know, it's in the book of Isaiah, the prophet looked at the, at the end times, and he looked at the devil, he says, this is the puny guy that that uh, that weakened the nations and deceived the whole world. See, we're looking at basically a program in a computer, right? We're looking. We're look. It's like a hologram. It's a mirage. Uh, and yeah, it's not, it's not hard for me to believe what you're saying is true. See, even if you know, of course, I'd like to to know more about it, but that's not. Yeah, there is data out there, and this the research does actually exist. This is what I went look because I went looking for. So I was like, "Well, how have all these other labs done um, more? Who else has done genomic sequencing on these on this virus?" Yeah. So I was like, "We know now that that one is um, fraudulent. That the Wuhan offering was not." correct that that's basically a computer generated model of a virus and that's what they've put out there so who else has done so i went looking for labs and i found um that france had done genomic sequencing as well and then i i went uh, i found one in um australia had even done a genomic sequencing and so i started looking into these labs and i started looking into who was funding their research and I found that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation was funding uh -huh. all of the research. The, 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 the research was being funded by their yeah. foundation. Yeah. So I, heard I, I immediately was like, that's why they haven't been able to isolate the virus. Because to keep a fraud going, you need more than one player in play, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. like, um, if you can have other players involved, then that sells the fraud on a far bigger scale. Now, when the virus started to get um, noticed here was by a ship called the Ruby Princess. And I don't know if you knew the story of the Ruby Princess, which was the cruise ship and there was an outbreak at sea. And, um, and when they came back into port, those people had um, uh, were diagnosed with coronavirus and yada, 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 except they didn't have coronavirus. They had influenza A, influenza B, H1N1. They mm. were testing positive for three different flu strains. And the only way that that would be possible is with the flu shot. Okay. And so they, this was a pensioner cruise where, um, and pensioners are massively encouraged to get the flu shot to go on cruises here. So <laughs> the only way that they also could pull off this type of fraud was by using the PCR tests. Uh huh. Because PCR tests are non specific. Yes. So if you dig around long enough and you have a cycle threshold that's high enough, you will find whatever you want there to be in there and you could find a cold that you probably dead viral particles that you yes. have in your body at any time that you've ever had a coronavirus. Right. <laughs> Now, I've heard, I, I've heard you talk about the PCR test before, and I'd like you to just explain a little bit uh, how, how it produced, what, what it was originally designed for, but it's not being designed for now, and uh, how it's uh, producing all these false positives. Yes, okay, so I don't know lots of information about the PCR test, but I do know this. It's not a diagnostic tool for viruses. And the creator who, um, who sadly, well, 
unfortunately died the year just the year before COVID broke out. And there's a bit of they don't exactly know what happened there, right? And so um, the PCR tests are not to be used for diagnosing viruses, and he said that. Uh -huh. So the creep came out and actually said they're not a diagnostic tool for viruses. That's not the purpose of the test. That's this is the person that created the PCR. Created the okay. PCR I want to make sure everybody gets that. All right. Yes. Go ahead. And he said it's not to be used as a diagnostic for viruses. That's not its purpose. It was never used. It's not being used for the purpose that it's actually designed for. Listen, we are talking about some really important things. And uh, we want you to be aware of what's happening. At least give you reasonable doubt so you will go do your own research. You don't have to just accept everything just because somebody said it. Myself, Maya, anybody else. Go do your own research. Yes, absolutely. But get out of this mindset that, well, the doctor said it, and so it must be true. Well, <laughs> Not a good test. place to be. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So the, um, the cycle thresholds that they've been testing at is well and truly a Above yes, what should be used, and even here in Australia, the cycle threshold anything of over 30 cycles is 97% a false positive. Our testing cycle is between 40 to 45. Uh huh. So now here's another interesting piece of information. If you are vaccinated and you start having showing symptoms of COVID or of this coronavirus, they, they dropped the testing cycle to 28. Interesting. And that is occurring in the US as well. Yes. And I, I think you are aware that... Um, the FD, the CDC has told the FDA to lift the emergency use authorization on the PCR test because they're not fit for purpose. Right. And do not actually differentiate between influenza. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they cannot wow. tell. Yeah. They cannot differentiate between the two, which is why. We're saying that the flu disappeared. Yeah. So yeah, the, the flu, flu disappeared. Yeah, the flu disappeared. Right. So, like, yeah. COVID was the new kid in town. Right. Yeah, if you go to worldpopulationreview.com and you look at the death statistics, okay, for any, for periods of time, and those are dynamically updated. You see, you get a different you get a different population for the nation of Australia, for example, one day to the next because they're dynamically updated. Now, if you go look at the death statistics for 2020 when the co when COVID hit, uh, it's actually lower than 2019. See, people think, oh, we're in a global pandemic. People are dying everywhere. No, they're not. And uh, it's just, that's not borne out. Now, 2020 was slightly lower than 2019. 2019 was slightly lower than 2018. All right. And yet we're supposed to be in the midst of a global pandemic. Well, when, yeah. Yeah. For our mortality statistics for 2019 for influenza pneumonia. Yeah. Yeah. Australia and, actually lost 4,124 people to influenza pneumonia in 2019. So to me, I'm like, well, we've only just lost 1,100 or so people in this pandemic in the last nearly two years. Like, wow. you know, like, 
what is going on? But we had a flu season in 2019 that wiped out over 4,000 people and no one, no one even better than I. Like it's like we weren't even. Yeah, it's no normal. Now, no one was, you know, the, the hospitals weren't overwhelmed. That was like, how are they selling? How are they still selling the story to us that we're in some type of pandemic that actually is is nowhere near as bad as our even influenza season? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, by the way, I just want to mention some resources to the viewers right now. Uh, first of all, uh, you may want to go back and listen to the first interview with Maya. And this is number two. And I'm sure glad we had her on today because uh, I am I'm hearing some fascinating information. But you might want to go back and listen to the first interview. I think that would bless you. Uh, also, I did something solo recently. It's about 45 minutes long. I believe it would be well worth your time. It's just called Doctors, a Different Perspective. I think one of the things that would be helpful, and, I've, and, and by the way, that different perspective is a Christian, a biblical perspective. And, uh, I, you know, not, not that you have to agree with me 100%. What I want to advocate that people do is really look at the scriptures, pray about things, and do your own thinking, all right? But see, the problem is, is that uh, we think that every MD knows, uh, you know, has the brass room to all things medical. They don't. They're people. Their knowledge is limited, and they're limited to a certain type of philosophy relative to the practice of medicine, which is just a practice. They're practicing. I'm not faulting them for that. Nobody knows everything about medicine except God. But there's different kinds of doctors, and it's good for us to take a look at these issues. Something else. Some people are listening to this. You've already had the jab, and we haven't even talked about that. That's a subject in and of itself. But You've had the jab and you're wondering, did I make the right decision or not? Listen, there's a video that I did with a couple that has a wonderful deliverance ministry out of Boise, Idaho. And uh, Ken and Sylvia Thornburg, and they share their revelation of a, a prayer of deliverance from the effects of the jab. And I strongly encourage you to go take a look at that and their resources. And there's a lot of other good things there too. But anyway, that's that's all the commercials. That's over. Uh, I want to just pitch it to you now, Maya. You can talk about um, more, more about the origins of the coronavirus. You can talk about how this thing was sold to us. You can talk about the jab and uh, how people's lives are affected uh, by that. So anyway, I'll, I'll just let you take it where you want it to go. I know you're a wealth of information. Let's talk about uh, the, the vaccine. So um, I said, yeah, I've done a video where I actually said, I believe that the virus was just a Trojan horse for the vaccine. And that the vaccine was really the end goal the whole time. Mm -hmm. But that was really the goal, was to bring these vaccines into play. And so the FDA, your FDA, had a forum recently where they discussed the need for booster shots. And I believe um, Biden wanted to bring them in. Yeah. Right, I'm correct there, aren't I? And um, well, his, his handlers, anyway. But <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, um, but a lot of information came out of that forum, which is very crucial. We knew. So I do research with a, a team, and I've been sort of researching with them for close, like over two years now, since uh, the measles epidemic in Samoa. But um, we followed the clinical trials of, of these vaccines when they were occurring. And we knew back then that they were going to be bad. So we already knew and were anticipating that there was going to be a colossal fallout from um, adverse reactions occurring from these vaccines 
and um, and that's exactly what what we've seen occur. Mm-hmm. And so currently in that forum there was a discussion and they've now nailed down the short-term mortality rate following the vaccine is 411 per million doses Mm. or one in 2400 so you've got a one in 2400 chance of dying following the vaccine in a short period of time Mm -hmm. and they know that uh, heart attacks and strokes have increased exponentially. Yes. And that the American death toll following the vaccine is more likely in the region of 135,000 people. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the, uh, the statistics for coronavirus deaths are, are inflated. The statistics for uh, deaths from the the jab are deflated, and it, it look it, it's like the it's like the uh, maxim that I use: figures don't lie, but liars do figure. And unfortunately, there's people with an agenda who actually profit from all of this, just like there's politicians that profit from war. And I know it's it's difficult for most of us who are just trying to live our lives. We love God. We love our families. We want to get along with people. It's difficult to understand sometimes the depth of evil and how evil works. But, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is there's people that want to perpetrate this pandemic. And uh, we don't have to analyze it all, but we what we do need to, to know is that evil is real. And it, this has everything to do with it. <laughs> so I praise God. Agree. Yeah. But God is in control and uh, we're, we're listening to his voice. His, his sheep know his voice and they follow him and he's leading us out. And uh, yeah. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. I believe and, that Pharaoh yeah. will fall. Yeah, absolutely. That's my, that's my uh, and and God, it's, I, I was, the Lord just spoke to me the other night and just gave me one statement and I almost, um, and it was just simply this, I will restore. Amen. I will Amen. restore. And so yes. I, I knew in that moment that we were coming out. Yes. You know, it's like when, because faith comes by hearing and hearing yes. by the word. And Absolutely. so when the word comes via the Lord, the faith comes with that word. And I knew it was over. Praise like God. I just knew we were coming out. And I was just like, Pharaoh will fall. Yeah. They should, they yeah. should never have targeted the church. <laughs> they may have got away with everything if the church was not targeted as well. Amen. When they went to the church, when they targeted the church, it was like, now God intervenes. Amen. Amen. You know, and I made the statement earlier, God is in control. And sometimes we kind of throw that phrase around as if, you know, we don't have to do anything. The fact of the matter is, God doesn't do anything apart from the church. Actually, God does does nothing on the earth apart from us praying and us declaring what God is doing. He needs a person to speak his word on the earth to bring that word to pass that word being his will. And uh, that's why Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Kingdom of God come, will of God be done on the earth as it is in heaven. And there is no coronavirus, nor is there a computer model 
<laughs> for for a virus in heaven. And, right. uh, you know, it, it just doesn't exist. So <laughs> all of that stuff is a result of misappropriated authority on the earth. And it's only on the earth. So anyway, all you know, and I'll tell you, I know myself, and this is easy for me to say because I'm a, I'm a missionary, and uh, I know this, that our time on this earth is not done quite yet. We may be very, very close, but we're not there yet. How do I know? Because Jesus said this gospel of the kingdom has to be preached to the four corners of the earth before the end comes. Matthew 24, 14. And so, no, we're not there yet. We still have some things to do. And God's going to uh, infuse us with his power and strength and his word in order for his will to be bought, brought to pass on the earth. And you got something to say. Go ahead. <laughs> Praise God. No, that's that's ex exactly spot on. I believe yeah. that we're in times, but I believe that we've been there since, you know, Christ went home. So it's yeah. like, but we're not at the end yet. And there are still things to be done. So mm -hmm. um, I had been sensing that it could go either way. So I was like much is hinge hanging in the balance right now and um, and it can go either way. It's going to yeah. tip one way or the other and it's just a matter of which way is it going to tip. But as soon as I, I got that word, yeah. I just knew, I was just like, it's done. Praise God. It's done. So, and that word was that I will, I will restore. restore. The years, right, yes. that the locusts have eaten. And so it's like, yes, okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew straight away what he was saying. And I have to tell you that um, I felt a shift. And the spirit comes so yes. so swiftly that there has been it's had a major impact in my life personally and the lives of my family. Like my family have absolutely gone through, um, it's for lack of a better word, hell in the last twenty months, and not because of uh, COVID, but just in our family with. We've come under massive, massive uh, attack you mm -hmm. know, by the enemy. But when he spoke that word, I knew that was the turning point. And Praise everything God. was just, and we've just had breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. Miracles are unfolding in my family right now. Amen. You know, you know so. yeah, I would just say to anybody listening, God is no respecter of persons. If that's what you need to expect it, that well, there is breakthrough for you, that God is bringing you out, that there is hope for you. And there's more than hope. There is faith, faith being the substance of those things that we hope for. So I've got, um, I'll just quickly add this little bit to share mm -hmm. this, this as it's, uh, I guess, as a testimony. So we lost our mom last year to cancer. We couldn't go back to New Zealand because it was during COVID restrictions and we couldn't actually get out of the country. So we couldn't attend her funeral or anything along those mm. lines. And then in October, um, our little brother, our baby brother was, um, uh, they found an anomaly and a scan on him. And it turned out that he'd had a recurrence of cancer. Um, and then in I think it was February. He had surgery in the January and in the February we found out that it had metastasized and it, um, he was basically given a terminal diagnosis. Mm. And they had, the diagnosis was, had, the, the cancer that he has is so rare there's only been 200 cases of it ever. Wow. So they didn't know how to treat it. The specialists in that field have not ever seen it before. Mm. Even 
the ones that they had reached out to worldwide to get advice from had not treated a case of it. Hmm. And so he has this rare type of sarcoma. He was given a terminal diagnosis because that was uh, it's metastasized. And we just have been like, our family has just gotten hammered over the last 20 months, but we've kept the faith. We yeah. have kept the faith, you know, and and then we've just found out that um, he's been having a, a type of chemo that's just to control the cancer to try to buy him more time. Instead, what's occurring is, is actually shrinking the tumours and one has shrunk so dramatically they're now talking that there's potentially surgical options are going to be on the table. Mm. And I'm like, and this was after um, I got that word, I will restore. And so oh. I knew, and now I'm like, he's going to be a miracle. Amen. He's going to be Amen. Any day, and he's yeah. not even going to require surgery because I'm like, God can do this. Just like that. Yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. It's big to us, but to God, it's so it's nothing. Yeah. nothing. It's nothing. It's just nothing. And so, yeah, I'm looking at what's going on in the world and I'm like, look, I'm just <laughs> seeing like basically. Yeah. 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 And I'm well, like, and I know. World needs the miracle, and I know somebody who's in the business of. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, that's right. Well, I'm, I, I mean, what would we do without Jesus, right? Look, oh. when, when you've when you've already had the privilege of killing your lion and your bear, your Goliath doesn't seem like such a a, a tall guy, you know, and it, it it really is. Listen, I would like like to do this, and and you know what. I think that if this leads to a, a, another time together, uh, this has been rich. This has been a lot of really good information, but I think also just an opportunity to impart hope and life to people that are listening. Uh, I would like the privilege of praying for your brother. And then I want to ask you to just kind of close us out in prayer for the people that are listening and for our world. So praise God. What is your brother's name? Reuben. Reuben. All right, let's pray for Reuben right now. And anybody listening to me right now, let's just be in agreement. Praise God. It just takes two or three of us. You know, we don't need a, th a thousand people on a prayer chain. Let's just agree because God's word is true. And he said that I sent my word and healed them and delivered them from all destruction. Psalm 107, verse 20. So his word is going to do the work so that he is glorified. Praise God. This is not about a treatment option in a hospital or clinic. This is about Jesus, the great physician, and what he's already uh, provided for us. So let's just agree. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus for Reuben, Lord, we come into agreement. We declare that as Maya said with her own mouth, that he is a miracle. Lord, we declare that he is. Uh, Lord, I thank you that there is no cancer, no other uh, symptom or any other type of disease or sickness that can stand in the way of your word at work in his life. And your, your word tells us in Matthew 8, 17, that Jesus took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. And what he took, Reuben's not going to take. What he bore, Reuben's not going to bear. Jesus already dealt with that. And in the name of Jesus, therefore, any trace of cancer, praise God for the progress that's already been made, but any trace of cancer is an illegal intruder without the, the legal authority to be in Reuben's body. And we commanded to go in Jesus' name never to return. We thank you for it, Father God. We thank you for doing the work. We give you praise. And we want to thank you, Lord God, that as Maya said herself, that this is nothing for you. It's a small matter to you. The same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead also quickens and makes alive our mortal bodies. 
Lord, if you raised up Jesus from the dead after his body was mutilated, and you raised up Jesus after he'd been dead for three entire days and been mummified, still, Lord God, you influ infused him with your power, the Holy Ghost power to raise him from the dead. What is a cancer anyway? Nothing. So we just want to thank you for it, Father, in the strong name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, why don't you pray for us too, Maya? Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Father God. Thank you. That thank you, Lord. In the midst of the darkness, uh, yes. the light has shone. Yes. When people sat in gross darkness, <laughs> light has shone. Yes. You are such a beacon of hope to us, Lord. And we just, we know, we know, we know that you are seated on the throne and you have not ceded your authority. Yes. And that the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. And that this, all things are created by you and that created for you and <laughs> created through you. All of this belongs to you, Lord. All of this belongs to you, and we are your inheritance. We yes. thank you, Father, that regardless of everything that is occurring in the world, you are simply exposing darkness, that, that darkness is being made manifest by your light and that you are going to take care of it. Yes. You said you will restore. You will restore. You will restore these yes. years that have been lost to us, Lord, that, that the locusts have eaten and that that very muchly describes exactly what we've been going through, Lord, that, that the locusts and government have superseded their powers and trying to, to take everything from us uh, and our freedoms and our liberties and and you said, he who in the sun sets free is free indeed. And, and therefore, Lord, we, we are not going to become entangled with, with yokes of bondage. We will stand firm. Yes. Thank you, Lord. In the yeah. liberty by which you have made us free. Yes. <laughs> we are Thank not you, entangled Lord. with yokes of bondage any longer. Yes. We do not wear that identity and i ask lord that you would begin to bring your people out of obscurity and that they would begin to walk in their identity and that in this day you would bring a supernatural boldness on people lord and that they would have a renewal in their mind that they would not be brought down with despair but that they would begin to see hope on the horizon, and that yes. they will be able to see what you are doing in this situation because you are always working, you are always moving, you are never asleep, Lord. You are yes. totally aware and not surprised by what yes. is occurring. And we <laughs> Thank you, Lord. In that knowledge, knowing that you are completely in control, and while it seems like Things are out of control, they are not. You're yes. just revealing how out of control men with power can be. But when you are involved and when you intervene, you laugh at the plans of man. Yes. You laugh at the plans of man. And I'm sure that you've gotten a good laugh yes. out of everything that's been <laughs> unfolding over the course of, of this, this time, Lord. And I'm just so grateful Thank that you, you are to an end and that hope is arising now. Glory hope is God. arising now and that your people would renew their minds, that they would begin to walk in your truth and that they begin to walk in your freedom and they would begin to walk with boldness in this day, in this day. And these things I ask and I pray in your awesome and mighty name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. All right. Well, somebody needed that, which included which included me. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So, Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much, Maya. Really do appreciate it. Yeah. In just a moment, we'll say goodbye to our friends on uh, YouTube. But uh, listen, I want to say to everybody, um, you know, be in touch with us if we can help you in any way. Uh, let us know. And regarding this video, wherever you're watching us, give us a thumbs up. Um, comment, share this with somebody, and subscribe to this channel. We would appreciate that so much. And uh, so we're, we're not just flapping our jaws together. We want to uh, bless you and do it with God's word. So thank you so much.